Welcome back to Business Analytics for Decision Makers. Today we're going to cover the Excel Analytic Q model. Our lesson objectives for the day are to introduce that Analytic Q model in Excel, where the inputs to the model are, where the outputs to the model are, and then we're going to develop that model to help us make decisions. We're going to do this by looking at two examples. The first is going to be how many baristas a coffee shop should have or higher. And this is a very traditional Q analysis. And then we're going to look at a new car wash. So whether or not a business should recapitalize and incur a higher service cost, which is also a fairly common form of Q analysis. So where is our Excel Q template? And so if you go to our Q page and we scroll to the bottom where our homeworks have been located, our first link is the Excel Q template. When we click on the Excel Q template, it's going to open another tab. And in this tab is a Google folder. In order to edit our Q template, we need to download it, which is this link at the top. Once it's downloaded, you need to find where it's located, and we can open our file. When we open the Excel Q template, what we'll see is an Excel file that looks like this. There should be three tabs, the MMS, which is the tab it'll open to, an MD1, and then an MG1. So let's go back to the MMS tab. And here we can see our inputs are all colored in yellow. So we've got our arrival rate, our service rate, the number of servers, the cost of service, and the waiting cost. Right? So those are inputs to our model. Our outputs are in blue. So we have our server utilization, the average number of customers in the queue, the average number of customers in the system, the average waiting time in the queue, the average time in the system, and the probability the system is empty. And we're going to build this up because what we don't see yet is our total service cost, our expected service cost for this model. So let's go back and look at an example, and we'll use this template to answer it and explore. So the first example problem we're going to look at is a coffee shop. And the coffee shop needs to determine how many baristas they should hire. So how many baristas should I staff? So we did some analysis of other coffee shops, and what we determined was this is an MMS system. So arrivals are Poisson, service tends to be exponential, and our decision is that S, how many baristas do I need to staff? For our specific coffee shop, what we're saying is our customers are, are arriving four per minute in the morning when we're concerned about this analysis. Our service rate is about two customers per minute per barista. Our cost of waiting, we're estimating at $60. And our cost of service, we know, is $15 an hour for each barista. So what are our initial questions? For this MMS system with lambda equals 4 and mu equals 2, what is the minimum number of servers the system must have? So the answer to that is three servers. Why not two servers? Well, with two servers, variation would cause a line to form. And this line would never be overcome by the service rate because the service rate and arrival rate are exactly equal. And so lambda must be less than s times mu, the effective service rate, or the system blows up as we talked about last time. So now, Let's figure out what the optimal number of servers is in our model. So how do we answer the number of baristas we should have at our coffee shop using our queue template? Well, the first step we have to do is input our data for our queue. And in our case, we said the arrival rate was four customers a minute. Our service rate was two customers per minute per barista. And we see that everything goes berserk in our spreadsheet, and that's because our effective service rate does not exceed our arrival rate. 
and we know that we need at least three servers. And now everything goes back to normal. Our cost of service is 15 and our cost of waiting is 60. Now, what we're concerned with as a business is cost in choosing our servers. And so let's figure out our total cost based on the queue. And so it's going to be determined based on the number of servers. And then we'll figure out our service cost, our wait cost, and the summation of those two will get us our total expected cost. To give Excel an equation, we use an equal sign. And so in this case, I just want to read off the number of servers. So I can click on that cell, and there's the equation. Now my service cost is going to be equal to the number of servers multiplied by that cost of service. Our weight cost will be equal to the number, the average number in the queue multiplied by our cost of waiting. And then our total cost will equal our service cost plus our weight cost. So 98.33 in the case of three servers. Now, what if I want to explore a whole bunch of different numbers of servers? So I'd like to look at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so on and so forth. So dynamically, right, I want to increment by 1. So let's go all the way up to 10. Now, instead of retyping and changing the number of servers and costing and pasting this information over from our equations, what I can do in Excel is called the data table. And so a data table will update all the equations based on data in either the first row or the first column. And so to do this, I can go to data, what if analysis, and then data table. And so in this case, I want my equations in the top row to update based on the first column. So I've got a column input. And what I want Excel to update in my model with that column input data is the number of servers. So I click on the number of server cell. I then click OK, and Excel propagates the data table for me. Now I can clean this up and make this look pretty so it's easier to read. So one of the things I can do, I can put grid lines in. I can make this area thick. I can cover it gray like my other headings. I can make it bold. And then total cost, right, is my decision variable. So I should color code it green to stick with my key. And then because my total costs are in dollars, maybe I only want it to cents. So I can come up here and I can shorten the number of decimals I'm looking at. Could probably do that for weight cost too. And I can see that the optimal number of servers in my case is four. To make this easier to read, I can conditionally format that total cost column. So on the home tab, I can come over to conditional formatting, and I can use a red-green color scale where the lowest number will be green. So if I click that, it's there. I can spread out my columns a little so I can read it, maybe not too much, right? And so there's total cost based on the queue. Now, what about if my total cost is based on the system? So a different example than this. I can make that same data table again except now I can do total cost based on the system. So in that case, how do my equations change? So here, my servers stays the same, right? I'm going to look there. My service cost remains the number of servers times my cost of service. My weight cost becomes the average number of customers in the system multiplied by the cost of waiting. And then my total cost will equal my service cost plus my weight cost. That equation is still correct. So if you click on the equation, it'll color in the blocks for you. And you can double check them that way. Now, let's 
go ahead and make this one 3, and we'll iterate up by 1 again for our number of servers all the way to 10. And then to make the data table, we're going to select everything. We went to data, what if analysis, data table. Again, right, we want it to update based on the column. And what we want it to change in our model is the number of servers. So I select that cell and I hit OK and it happens. And my conditional formatting is preserved. So four is still the ideal number, if I, even if I'm looking at a system's cost. An interesting quirk with data tables that you should be aware of is whatever I put in the model will always reflect itself in the top row. And so you'll get redundancy, or in some cases, if you put something outside of your system, right, it'll throw it in and automatically update it, while the rest of the data table will be preserved with what's in that left-hand column. So let's go back to three. And four was our ideal number that we should go back and tell our boss. So now let's look at recapitalization, which is another problem that Qs can help us with. And so in our case, we've got a car wash. And the decision is whether or not I should upgrade my car wash. On doing some analysis, what we realized is while arrivals are Poisson, service is actually discrete. And so the cars pull up, and every 30 seconds I can put a car through the car wash and it'll start running through the process of getting service. And so we're going to use a different type of model in this case, where our arrival rate's 90 cars an hour, our service rate is 120 cars an hour, and our cost of service with the current car wash is about $1,500 for the lease on the car wash and my employees, and then my cost of waiting is $500 for making people wait. Now, if I recapitalize and build a new car wash, my arrival rate is going to stay the same, but now my service rate, I can handle 150 cars an hour, but my cost of service is going to rise to $2,000 because I have to pay for these new materials. My cost of waiting doesn't change, so it's still $500 an hour. And so my decision is, should I upgrade my car wash? So now let's go over to Excel and solve this. So how do I answer my car wash recapitalization problem? So if I go back to my template and I switch over to the MD1 tab, which is what we're going to model, I can put in our new input data. So for the current system, we said that 90, 90 cars are arriving an hour. We were able to provide service to 120 cars an hour. Our cost of service was 1500 and then our cost of waiting was 500 Now, in this system, I think our total cost is based on the queue length. And so our service cost, in this case where we only have one server, is equal to the cost of service. Our wait cost is going to be equal to our cost of waiting times the average number of cars in the queue, L sub Q. And then our total cost will be equal to our service cost plus our wait cost. Right, so this is my decision variable metric. We'll make it green. We can format this so that we can use it again. Exactly like our other tables is kind of just nice and convenient. Fill these guys in. Make them gray. Right? Now, this was for our original system, our current system. So this is the current system. If we copy equations and we want the numbers to stay, come right over here to values. And so this is the current system. Now, because we made everything in equations, we can now figure out our total cost for the new system just by updating our input data. So our arrival rate stays the same. Our service rate increases to 150, but our cost of service rises to 2,000 now, and our cost of waiting remains 500. So you can see that our cost for the new system, if we were to upgrade, is $2,225. And that's greater than 
So we probably aren't going to make that change. It's not cost effective from a business standpoint. Now, in making recapitalization decisions, you may be given an initial offer of what you can buy this new material for. And something that you might want to think about is what is the maximum I would be willing to pay for the new car wash? What if it was negotiable, that upgrade? And so what I want to know is what can that cost of service or what would I need to be able to negotiate that cost of service down to in order to make the new car wash worth my while? So let's go back to our spreadsheet and figure that out. So how do we figure out what the cost of service would need to be for us to be indifferent between the new system, which we're showing right now, versus the current system? A company would be indifferent if the total cost of the current system and the new system were the same. So the difference between the new system and the current system would need to be zero. Excel has a neat function called Goal Seek, which will allow us to set this cell to zero by changing our cost of service cell. And to use it, I'm going to go to my Data tab, and then I'll come over to What If Analysis, and then Goal Seek. So I want to set this target cell to a value of zero by changing the cost of service in our model. And if I hit OK, it'll put its solution directly into the cell. So $1,837.50 is what I need to negotiate that new car wash's average rate down to in order for me to be indifferent between the current system and the new system. Well, your boss doesn't believe that the new car wash is going to be negotiable. He believes that the recapitalization cost is going to be firm at $2,000. But he thinks that there's a lot of potential for business growth, and the arrival rate, he believes, is likely to grow in the next couple months for the car wash. So what would the arrival rate need to increase to to justify the new car wash? So now what we're going to look at is, hey, what does our arrival rate need to rise to in order for us to want to recapitalize the car wash with the increase in our service cost that's associated with it? So let's go back to our Excel model and answer this question. So for our boss's new question, we need to vary both the arrival rate, so we want to increment this up as if the business were to grow, and then the service rate needs to vary between the two systems we're looking at. In addition to that, we have the cost of service, which differs between the two systems by $500. So I can build something called a two-way data table, which will allow me to change two elements of my model at once. I'm going to change the arrival rate and the service rate because that cost of service is just a $500 difference, and that's easy to adjust after we build the data table. So let's go ahead and put our original data in. So our arrival rate's 90, the service rate's 120, and then our cost of service was 1500, and our cost of waiting's 500. So let's create some space to build our two-way data table. So the first thing is the current system. And then I want to compare it to the new system. The service rate of the current system is 120. For the new system, it's 150. And then the arrival rates we want to look at, let's increment by one. So from 90 all the way up to 100. Now, what I'm interested in is total cost. And for a two-way data table, it can only update one equation. So we're going to have to write it all in one cell. And that cell has to be in the top left corner of the data table. So this is equal to my service cost, which in this case is just the cost of service, plus my cost of waiting times the number of cars in the queue. And so this should be that 260.250 if we have it right. Now to make this run as a two-way data table, I select where I want my data table to be. I come to the data tab, what if analysis, data table. And we get that same GUI menu as before. But now we have a row input cell, right? So in that top row, what I wanted to update is the service rate. So I select the service rate cell. 
and in the first column, I want it to change the arrival rate. And I want it to change those numbers and then report to me the new total cost. And so I can hit OK, and Excel's computed all my total cost for me. The new system's total costs, though, are off by a factor of 500, so I need to add 500 there. Right, and that's the same number all the way across the board. So really my new system's total cost is located here. So now I need to compare the two, and I see that the arrival rate needs to be 96 before the new system is more cost effective than the current system. So that's almost a 7% increase that we need in order, 7% increase in our arrivals and our hourly arrivals before the new system is more cost effective. If this arrival rate's only 95 customers an hour, then the current system's still better. We covered a lot today, so let's recap what we learned. So we learned all about our analytic queue model in Excel, the inputs, which were colored in yellow, the outputs, which were in blue, and then how we make decisions, we built into our queue model and colored it green, those cost calculations. We did this by first looking at how many baristas a coffee shop should hire, our traditional queue analysis, so it's the optimal number of servers to provide in a system. And then we looked at recapitalization decisions with the new car wash example. Along the way, we developed a bunch of Excel skills or introduced them. We learned how to enter equations in Excel. And then we created decision tables, both one-way and two-way tables. And then we also performed what-if analysis. So that concludes our Q block. And next time, we will do forecasting and regression. Have a great day.